Okay, so for those who aren't familiar with Hex, I'll give you a quick rundown of the deck we're going to be playing today on the ladder. Uh, it is called Diamond Wild Momentum. So the uh, deck is named after the momentum mechanic, and it's a keyword that says whenever you play a resource, your troops will increase in power by the amount shown, and then this number will increase. So for every resource you play, they're just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger every turn. And so we leverage this by making sure we're playing cards that let us play additional resources on each of our turns. And since we're playing additional resources on some of our turns, we can get up to uh, playing bigger troops faster, uh, so ahead of curve, and uh, you know use those to put pressure on our opponent. So we're, we're taking advantage of really powerful efficient troops such as Eldurthan's Glory which is good against aggressive decks, Eternal Seeker which is like a catch-all kind of card, it's very powerful um, in many situations. I can, ex I can, as we get into the games and the cards come up I can explain in more detail what each of them does and uh, when the situation calls for it. So a lot of our troops are utilizing momentum as I said or just utilizing the fact that we're playing resources in other ways such as Exalted Pathfinder who's not only a momentum troop but says whenever we play a resource we draw a card so this is a way to keep our hand full of the troops and the resources we need to keep the momentum going and so yeah that's with that said let's hop in on the ladder see how we do the ladder feel free to ask any questions anyone in chat if you want to know more happy to explain things hopefully we're not waiting too long to find a game Earlier, the ladder was firing fairly frequently when we were playing in the afternoon, but there we go. Got our first match. And we're going first. Which is very good because I can already tell that we're facing an aggressive deck, so we want to be going first. So, in Hex, um, each player not only has a deck of cards, but they have a champion. So our champion, leveraging the momentum mechanic further, it allows us to give a troop momentum permanently and then allows us to play an additional resource on each of our turns. It costs five charges to activate this power. Charges are typically gained from playing resources. So normally that means by, on turn five, we get to activate our power. Looking at our opponent's champion, we know that they are playing an aggressive deck because their champion, for four charges, summons a random troop with one attack, one defense, and it gets speed, which means it can attack right away. So they're, they're going to try to run us down before we can get our, get our momentum going, before we can get our big troops going. I'm going to keep this hand. Um, it's not a, an amazing hand, but we have uh, early removal to get rid of some early pressure from our opponent, and we have Eldurthan's Glory in hand, which is a very good card against aggressive decks, as I explained uh, when we were looking at it before. Eldurthan's Glory says, deploy, so when this enters play, void each troop with defense three or less. So chances are the troops that our opponent's playing are gonna have three or less defense. And so if we can survive to the turn where we can play this, it pretty much can put the game away. But we'll see. So I'm going to stack a resource on top of the deck here. Um, yeah, I, I guess I didn't explain that. So the first resource I played is called a Diamond Ice. Now normally when you play a resource, for people who aren't familiar with perhaps games like this or Magic the Gathering, the lands you play provide you with resources that you can spend on the turn that you play them. However, the 
uh, the resource I played was a slow resource or just a resource that doesn't have um, uh, that you can't spend right away until the next turn. But but the benefit of uh, playing it was that it allowed me to stack a random card on top of my deck. And the random card, I could choose between a resource or a non-resource to put on top of my deck. So I chose resource. And the reason for that is because I wanted to make sure we got another diamond source so we could play Eldurathan's Glory because it requires, it requires that we have played two diamond resources at least. So there's our second one. And this is a nice one. Wax Sacrament, when I play it, it creates a drop of wax, puts it into my hand, and a drop of wax creates a 1-1 one, one troop. So something that will block this baby yeti. It, it has... Yeah, this has a mechanic called Illuminate on it. Not something we can really need to go into detail for now, but just know that it, those things create 1-1s one, for me. I'll take this block. It's fine if he wants to trade his 1-1 one, one for mine. Okay. So we're going to play Pomegranate here to play out our fourth resource so that next turn we can drop Eldurathan's Glory and clean up this board, hopefully. Our opponent's missing resource drops, so... We have plenty of time here. Okay, he probably... Not playing anything. Hmm. The fact that he swung with... a 0-3... makes me think he might have the, um, the troop in hand that gets cheaper for every troop that you attack with. But he certainly would have been able to play it out this turn if that was true. So maybe he just hit his attack all button just to do that. Or he's anticipating an Eldurathan's glory uh, from us, but... I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to just get greedy here and, and make him play out more things to make this Eldurathan's glory more valuable. But... Yeah, like I said, that's probably being greedy. I should probably just clean up this board now. While I can. We have a follow-up. We haven't had to use our Decree of Banishing yet, so... If he plays a follow-up threat, we have removal for it. And, in theory, it's going to be tough for him to deal with this 5-5. Five five. I mean, he could... He could remove it. He has removal for it, sh certainly, but his troops themselves shouldn't be able to get through this. Okay, so he uses Charge Power. He created a, a Baby Yeti, basically the same card that he played on turn one. And an Escape Goat. That's interesting. Hmm. Why would he do this? Well... Ah, okay. Here, here we go. As I, I evaluate, as I thought before, but I kind of... I was thinking a different troop. So, he had a troop in hand with the Assault keyword. Assault means whenever a troop you control attacks, the following effect executes. So... His, der his deranged marauder was getting randomly getting buffed and having its cost reduced that whole time. That explains why he was swinging before with his zero co uh, his zero attack troop and why he swung his baby Eddie into my five five. But uh, we, like I said, we have this decree of banishing, so we're fine here. We are running off a lot of shards, but. We're going to use, this is what I played on turn one, this Fate Weave resource. This Fate Weave mechanic says, choose one, put a random resource or non-resource from your deck on top of your deck. So I'm going to put a non-resource on top of my deck because we have plenty. And I'm going to get rid of this Deranged Marauder because even if I wanted to trade my Eldurathan's Glory for it, I can't. 
because it has the feral keyword, which means it must be blocked by two or more troops. So it's essentially unblockable on this board state right now. I guess I could have... I guess, yeah. May as well, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my charge power on Eldurathan's Glory, which lets me play an additional resource this turn and gives it Momentum 1. So the first time Momentum triggers by playing a resource, it gets plus 1, plus 1. Now it has Momentum 2. And the second time I play a resource, it's going to get plus 2, plus 2 until the start of my next turn. So this Palm lets me play a resource again. Now he's in 8-8. Eight, eight. So he can swing in. Our Eldorothan's Glory has the keyword Steadfast, so it doesn't exhaust when it attacks, so it can... It's good for playing offense and defense at the same time, which is great right now. For... Alright, so Scapegoat says, when this becomes blocked, put this into your hand, so when I block this, it's not gonna die, it's just gonna pop back into his hand, which is why he's fine swinging that in here. He has another one, okay. And we have a Seeker. So, yeah. Just gonna get rid of this now, then. So, Eternal Seeker. When it enters play, it tells me, choose a number, void all other cards of cost of the chosen number. So I'm gonna pick three. Yeah. I pick three, because this is Marauder, cost three. It gets voided, and then he's in a really bad spot, so he decides to concede the game. All right, so aggressive deck. Um, it, Seeker looked good there, but normally it's going to be a little clunky and slow. So I'm going to bring in... Uh, these Rhyme Claws. They're just a very good value troop for blocking, like, early aggression. And... I don't know, do I want more Seekers or just, like, Sunlit Sentence? He seems to be all about those Marauders, and they can get well out of range of Eldurathan's Glory and Winter's Grass, but I have Decrees. Kind of wondering if I should do a split between Eldurathan's Glory and Sunlit Sentence in this case. Yeah, why not? Let's let's try that. See how it, see how it feels. Yep, that's a good hand. And that's a good start from him. This this goat's going to get to do a lot of damage to us before we can respond to it. We needed you a turn ago. Well, so I could either hold up Winter's Grasp this turn to hit a potential Matriarch of Flames that he might play down. And then my next turn, I can either play the Shamrock or go... Frost form Rhyme Claw into Leprechaun Artist. Essentially one drop and a two drop. Just to have multiple blockers. I think I'll do that. Maybe, I don't know. There's an argument for putting down the Leprechaun Artist so I can just block the escape goat, but I feel like we're going to get hit by removal. Uh, I should have 
Well, well, we'll see. I should have played this before I attacked, because if he plays something like Flare Steel, yeah. He could have buffed it to beyond the attack. Beyond three attack. All the assault troops that get cheaper. So we really want to see an Eldurathan's Glory or Sunlit Sentence fairly soon. Oh, that was loose. I should have played the Leprechaun Artist before playing the resource to give it Momentum 1. Then it could have... Eh, I guess it doesn't matter that much, but... I, I probably, I still should have done that. If I was going to do it, if I was going to do that at all. Maybe we just play the gold father here. Trades with one of his guys. Hmm. All right. Yeah. We'll just we'll try that. Opponent is just taking their sweet time right now, deciding. Well, they don't. Ha they don't have a decision to make. They're just staring at my card for some reason. Doesn't ha didn't have a combat trick to save his troop. Oh boy. He's going wide. Well, we're really hoping to see something like a Sunlit Sentence or Eldurathan's Glory off the top next turn. Because we're in trouble. This is this is one of the, he just had like a really really good hand. Just all the assault troops early on. Imagine we'll see a full swing here. So we could take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down to four, that's kind of scary. When you play an action, this gets plus one and crush. He hasn't been playing action so far. He might now. We really... Eh. If he has something like Fireball, he can finish us off anyway, so I think I'm just gonna block there. Hope, hope he doesn't.
if we get a fireball to the face, we're losing this game anyway, so. Yeah, or that. Alright, GG. Exaxes. Yeah, we were a bit too slow. Um, we we're a bit too slow on the draw. He had a really, really good hand. But ultimately, I, I like what we're I like what we're doing here. I think. I don't know if there's any real changes I want to make. Um, maybe a path cut a pathfinder for uh, Eldarithan's glory. Just because normally, if we're getting to four resources, we're, we could pro we're probably at the ability to play fives as well, and this is just higher impact. The card draw that Exalted Pathfinder gives us is not going to be relevant if we can't live to to actually play the extra cards it's drawing for us. So again, like Eldurathan's glory on that board state there would have been amazing. Granted, we were too slow that game. We died on our turn four. But, you know, if we go first this game, we can get there sooner. And especially if we get a Palm of Granite. Well, we'll see. Yes, I would like to go first. Well, there we go. Palm of Granite, Eldarithan's Glory, Shamrock. The only thing that makes this hand more perfect is if we had an ability to generate a white source on turn one. So we could play this righteous whack shot, but this is still decent. And he's mulliganing down to six, so we're in a decent spot. The reason why I can't make a white source with these uh, resources is because they require that I already have a white or green um, threshold, which you see I've gained here when I played that first uh, resource, and then it makes another one. So now this can make white um, because I already have green. So hoping he doesn't have removal for this wax shot and just because then it's just a you know a blocker for this escape goat. He has no second resource. Well, that is really really good for us. I think I'm gonna play out the shamrock in this case then. Because, hmm, the Shamrock or the Anilix? He's attacked how many times? One, two, three. So one of his assault troops costs one if he wants to play it. Maybe I'm supposed to give the Shamrock momentum there. Just take another one damage from the Yeti. Alright, they they decided that this game was getting out of their reach, so they decided to quit. Easy, easy win. Jump into another one.
Hello, anybody on the ladder? If we're getting unusually long wait times, I'm j I might just switch modes and play something like, um, like Frost Ring Arena or something. Could play on the Immortal uh, Immortal Gauntlet, but I don't I don't know if I really feel like doing that tonight. I really want to focus. <laughs> on that and I'm a noob streamer so I don't think I can do that be fiddling with all these settings checking things and playing a quote unquote more serious mode at the same time I'd be compromising my chances pretty heavily I would think okay we have a mono blood player it looks like Mono blood, all about the heavy removal, hand disruption, stealing my troops with Bride of the Damned, all kind of nasty stuff. It's a pretty bad matchup for us, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. Opponent's going first, so we're on the draw. I think this hand is fine. It's missing its third resource drop for these, you know, these are like some of the best troops against blood in particular these brilliant annihilix because he can't target or block these with most of his cards so well, pretty much all of his cards he's got very very little interaction in his deck for, for these but uh, it's definitely our best card in the matchup okay never mind not mono blood looks like he's uh, blood ruby so he played in a withering gaze, which lets him look at uh, look at our hand and steal a non-troop, non-resource card from it and put it into his deck. But we don't have a non-troop, non-resource. So, but he did get free information, and you can see what we're doing, which is unfortunate. Gonna have to discard a card anyway, since our hand limit is seven. So I may as well just play this out because that's definitely the card I'm gonna discard. So this is a very different matchup then, because he likely has the card Jouncing Carnage in his main deck, and Jouncing Carnage is a prismatic card that says destroy target troop. So it can he can target our Brilliant Annihilix with it, because this says it can't be targeted by non-prismatic cards. A prismatic card is any card that has more than one threshold requirement. So this is a prismatic card, for example. These are not. This artifact troop, which has no thresholds, not prismatic. This single threshold card, not prismatic. <laughs> Probably going to get Return to Cindered on that Uppercon Artist. Could still happen. <laughs> And it lives. Okay, great. I actually don't know how this matchup is. I haven't played it a whole lot. He's better equipped to deal with our Brilliant Annihilix, but because he doesn't have... I mean, presumably because he can't leverage um, the awesome power of Bride of the Damned as much, or as easily, you know... That's better for us. Hopefully he lets us attack with this. Yay. So Leprechaun Artist says whenever it attacks, create a lucky coin and put it into your hand. A lucky coin is a 1-1 one, one resource. It doesn't provide thresholds. It doesn't provide a charge, but it does Fate Weave, which means we get to choose what our next draw will be or somewhat stack the top of our deck. 
and we really needed a shard drop, so that's why I'm happy you let us move to combat there. Uh, okay, so he's not mono blood, but he's probably running Massacre, which can do a number on our board. But, I mean, our hand is full, so... Well, if that's the case... You know what? I'm going to play Shamrock the Goldfather. So... It can live through a massacre and generate some value because he says whenever our opponent plays a non-troop, no, just a non-resource card, he creates a lucky coin and puts it into our hand. And when we have three of them, we can discard them to play the top card of our deck for free. So we can get a little bit of value from, from Shamrock even if he decides to massacre. And he's missing his second blood threshold. Okay. Well, he, 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 he got that. That's fine. That's fine. The weird thing was is that he... Isn't this the second... No, maybe he just drew this. I'm just wondering why he didn't make second blood with this. Right, because he played it on a turn when he had one ruby threshold, one blood threshold. Maybe he has Scars of War in hand. That could be pretty bad. If I play any any of these out. Um, yeah. So this Annihilix lives through a Scars of War now, but not the Massacre. If he does rip a, rip a second blood threshold off the top and massacres, no big deal. We have a follow up. No. So massacre says all troops get negative three, negative three permanently, and all our troops were three or smaller. So. Um. I'm actually going to stack a resource on top here. I'd like to get to our charge power sooner rather than later. I gotta imagine he's playing Candlelight at the top end. There's that Scars of War I was fearing before. Maybe because of that I should have played Brilliant and Nihilix. for a massacre. He's, he's getting low. Looking for a massacre, a Jouncing Carnage, I guess. Hmm. Decent draw, but we need a resource before I can justify playing that. Uh, do I want to play it anyway? No, I don't think so. I want to draw at least one card from this. He has it anyway. Okay, well now I'll play it out because I need to put put some pressure on him. I think we're boarding out all of this spot removal for the next game. He hasn't shown us any troops. Uh, these blood-based control lists, just removal, removal, removal. Hey, the best. How's it going? <laughs> Oh, 
Well, we're probably not winning this game, but, you know, we can try. There's a chance. He's only taken away most of our threats. Not a big deal. Uh, yeah, whatever. Save the shard. Unfortunately, we're not playing Pokemon TCG. Although I could be tempted to try that someday. Okay, so we're going to play Eternal Seeker. We're going to choose the number 5 to get rid of his Dark Heart. And hope that he doesn't have any more removal in hand. I'm going to play one of these out because if we draw another shard, I can champ power our Seeker, play two resources, deal, what is that, 8 damage to him? Puts him in range for us to finish him off. Well, not really. We're kind of... We've got a ways to go. He's probably going to hero fall this. Or that. Yeah, but the thing is... Uh, this is a video game, so I can't put a Pokemon card in the video game. It doesn't, it won't let me. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> what? A Mon Calamari Cruiser? Isn't that a, isn't that a Star Wars thing? What does that have to do with Pokemon? All right, we didn't draw any threats, and yeah, we're just going to move on to the next game. Well, I mean, it's a digital card game. <laughs> yeah, I was playing on a table that occasionally catches fire. I got it at Ikea. Uh, do, do, do. what are we playing? What are we playing? I think I want to cut these decrees since they're bad against his dark hearts. These winter's grass hit nothing in his deck. Well, maybe the decrees are fine in a pinch, though. I kind of want these brosies to, like, empty his hand of all those removal spells. I don't have a whole lot for this matchup. Uh, sunlit Sentence, maybe? For when he starts at swing swinging at us with his um, Primordial Saber 2s, but if, he, if we get to that point... Um, if we're getting to the point where we're having to worry about his Primordial Saber 2s, we've already lost the game, I, I think. But I don't really have anything else to bring in. I, maybe Rotting Chomp Knight, because it can kind of deal with his Dark Hearts. And they're, it's just a big threat. Like one, I can bring in one, it's probably fine. Eh, I guess. We're not really equipped to fight. Uh, we're not really equipped equipped to fight this matchup directly. We just kind of have to fight through his removal and uh, kind of get under what he's doing. I misplayed there uh, in the first game, though. I should have 
shouldn't have played out those two troops when I was thinking he had the Scars of War. I just kind of forgot. I'm going to blame Twitch chat for that one. Two righteous whack shots. Mm, I'd rather the leprechaun artist because I want to start drawing more shards, or I guess creating more shards. <laughs> mm. How is the um, like the video and audio quality, guys? If you can tell me. Looking at OBS, I haven't dropped any frames according to OBS. Oh, that's a, unfortunate. He killed the thingy wisely because now we don't have. We can't trigger momentum again. Oh, blood based control decks. Exquisite? Really? Okay, so he played a card called Zedek Judgment. It has the Verdict mechanic. Verdict says... Okay, whenever, whenever a card with Verdict resolves, it gives the opponent two options. One that's good for them or bad for me. But really, it's all bad for me because anything that's good for the opponent is bad for me. Anyway, it selects... Uh, there's six possible good options and six possible bad options and it chooses them randomly based on the board state so for example it's giving me the option to sacrifice a troop i control it wouldn't give me this option if i didn't have a troop to sacrifice so it kind of it's it, it's random but it's intelligently random if that makes sense um so i really don't want to sacrifice the troop i have but i also really don't want to draw my card um but it's the better of the two options right now. Okay. And now it's at, I can either give him a Daybreak or give him a Nightfall. Daybreak heals him every turn. Nightfall damages me every turn. I'm trying to race him, trying to get under him. So I'm going to give him the Nightfall. I don't want him healing. He doesn't start pressuring our life total until later. So the fact that this Nightfall is doing that now... And we're just missing our shard drops here, so I'm just going to pack it in and move on to the next game, because watching me sit here twiddling my thumbs fumbling is not going to be very fun. Look at me assuming that my stream would be, would be fun even if I wasn't doing that, but you know. We'll just move on. Move on to the next one. We, we had to mull to six and we just couldn't draw our third shard. Not much we could do in that situation. Are the, like the audio levels good, like between game audio and my voice? I think there's definitely a bit of a delay between, you know, there's a bit of a stream delay. I'm not sure how to get rid of that yet. Maybe it's something, maybe it's an OBS setting I have to play around with. All right. I punt, I, I'll turn up the game audio a little bit here. We'll see how that is. You can let me know if it's obnoxious. So, aggro. 
Um, you know, this is a decent starting hand against it. We just need to hit our third shard drop. But I'm, I'm not about to mulligan a hand that has all the tools um, to allow us to win this matchup except the shards. So we just got to hope to run some shards off the top. We have a Winter's Grass to take care of some early pressure. So, yeah, hopefully we just get there. If we hit the third resource on time and put this Shamrock on the table, this is a very tough matchup for our opponent. Oh, we're just going to brick and die in all of our games, aren't we? Uh, we did so... We were doing so much better this afternoon. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. That thing can get bigger than our troops. So I'll get rid of it now while it's small. Alright, well we didn't hit our shard, but we got a replacement Winter's Grasp, so that's something. Unless he has a Primordial Sabretooth. There we go. That's kind of scary. So our opponent's charge power for five charges, which they're currently at six, so they can activate it, says troops they control will get plus one and crush but plus two in crush instead if they control an, a familiar and these two are familiars so next turn he's going to give all his troops plus two attack and crush crush means any additional damage that they deal to my troops crushes over and hits my life points so if i block you know if this three two had crush naturally if i block it with a one one it only takes one damage to kill my my one one troop and then two more damage i would take to the face so, with that in mind, probably going to have to block pretty aggressively. Or do we? He probably has refuels in hand, so maybe we actually just want to let his troops hit us. Play the Eldurathan's Glory as a follow-up. And then... And then the game's pretty much ours. Exalted Pathfinder's dying almost certainly if I play it. I'll play the Anihilix and then play the resource so it gets a uh, so it gets buffed. So maybe I should explain this card a little bit more since uh, people watching might not understand. Uh, so Hex, uh, because it is a digital card game, they can uh, do some interesting things with the cards that you couldn't normally do. Uh, you know, in a physical card game. And one of the th concepts of Hex is that they have socketed cards. And socketed cards allow you to customize the card uh, during the deck building process and give them different attributes or keywords um, uh, to, you know, make them synergize better with your deck or uh, uh, fill, fill in a weakness you might have had. Anyway, so... One of the gems I put into this brilliant Inhalix says whenever I play a resource, it gets plus one, plus one permanently. So it's kind of like a, kind of like a momentum, and it also has a, a another mechanic which I don't need to worry about right now. But anyway, so it's gonna get plus one, plus one permanently because of this. Yeah, I don't know what these are. This is a new, like, troop-type Enders. 
that they introduced I, they're not like black holes i think they're actually more like more like cells or, or something they're like i don't know they're blobs but they're an amalgamation of all these different things they're like an alien race that just suck up different things and take on their attributes so this one is apparently white lions and humans i i don't know The fact that he's, like, he's going really, really all out here. This is gonna hurt. Part of me is thinking just to take this damage, because 5, 10, 14. So we take 14, we go down to 8. But then there's just a good chance that he can't really win from that point on if we void all his troops. I definitely don't want to block the Zomboys because I don't want it to go in the bin. Or I don't want it to go in his graveyard because he probably has the, the card that brings cards back from the graveyard. And then this can bring more from the graveyard whenever it, when it swings. So I don't want to do that. If I'm going to block anything, it's going to be one of these two. Man, do I just take this damage? I'll, I'll split the difference. I'll only take 10, not 14. I don't mind if there's just one troop in his bin. All right, now we get to look at what the, the second gem on this troop is. It has a mechanic called Rowdy, which means anytime I play something that costs more, than it does, which is which is what I'm about to do. The cost increases by one, and then the following effect executes. So it says it'll get plus, plus two, plus two, and crush this turn. So not permanently, unfortunately, but... I think I'm gonna stack a resource on top of my deck because these resources don't make charges to activate my, activate my charge power, and I'm one away from doing it, and if I can do it on the turn, the next turn when I play an Exalted Pathfinder, I can draw two cards from them, get a lot of value out of them. It's the rowdiest of lions. Brilliant, rowdy, and nihilix. Okay, stacking a resource, avoiding all his troops. And I'm not going to get greedy here. I'm not going to swing with the Annihilix. I'll leave it back as a blocker because starting next turn, we can momentum up our Aldurathan's glory and then we can swing and defend at the same time since he has Steadfast. And yeah, opponent's just like, it's over. Okay, much like we did for the last aggro matchup, I'm going to cut... These clunky Seekers, as good as they are, put in the Rhyme Claws, because they're good for buying us time, and uh, one Sunlit Sentence. Oh, opponent's ready to go already. He might not have, um, he might not have much in his sideboard for this matchup. It is a tough matchup for sure. Yep, this is acceptable. Ice on one, guaranteed our third shard. Wild shard on two, play Leprechaun Artist. Okay, he's got he's got a root in hand for sure. So we hit our third res resource already. Kind of makes me want to stack a non-resource on top then, since we got a pomegranate to get into our sunlit sentence anyway. Maybe it's a, a little greedy, but we'll see. Because I, I prefer to find something other than the sunlit sentence. The sunlit sentence is kind of acting like a fourth Eldurathan's glory right now, but it's not as good, because it destroys 
the troops rather than void them like the uh, Eldurathan's glory does. And I don't want troops in his graveyard for him to target with uh, with refuel, which we haven't seen yet. I keep talking about this card that brings troops uh, back from the dead. We haven't had a chance to see that yet because our deck is really good at stopping that from happening. What's his play? Oh, that's not good. So Replipop are 4,000. Uh, this card says whenever it deals damage to... Okay, well first, it gets two random boons. Boons are, are this set of keywords, okay? So whatever, it got Flight and Swift Strike. Uh, the more relevant one being flight, meaning it can fly over my troop, I can't block it and prevent its second effect from happening, which is says when it deals combat damage to an opposing champion, it sacrifices itself, then creates two more, which will then get random boons, and then the process keeps going and going and going and going. Now, I mean, we can clean up a really wide board with this sunlit sentence, but I mean, if he plays around this, he can, you know, I can destroy half of his his army and then he'll still have some left and the other bigger problem is that when this sacrifices itself it's going to go into his graveyard for him to play play out again so we're so that's kind of sad um nonetheless i guess i'm just going to play pomegranate here to make sure we can sunlit sentence on five Why did that have to get flight? I mean, I guess it could have got speed, which would have been even worse. That's pretty good for him. That means that he can sacrifice all of his troops that are about to get sunlit sentenced, and then this card will get more powerful. Unless he swings with it as well, which I hope he does, but... Hey, Sylph, what's going on? A Replipopper with Lethal and Crush, and then he got Rage 1 twice, so it has Rage 2. So I can play out the Whack Shot. <laughs> Oh, you know, struggling to survive this game. Play out the whack shot. Get our fifth charge with this. Hit this. Come on. Play another shard. I'm gonna stack a non-resource on top. Hope we get something good. And now I can hold up Sunlit Sentence. Not gonna swing because he's happy to just trade that um, Replipopper with lethal. Lethal means that if this deals any amount of damage, the troop it damages dies, so even though it's a measly 3-2, it's going to kill my 8-8 if I block with it. Alright, Nefarious Corruptor. He gets to add the line of text to one of my troops at the start of each of my turns. My troop will deal two damage to me. 
I imagine he's expecting the sunlit sentence, so he's not going to go all out. Yeah. Um, tempted to just block anyway. Oh, right. That's how that works. It had lethal and crush. So it only actually, the lethal said it only needed to do one damage to my truth to kill it. So the rest of the damage went through, which triggered, which triggered the ability. That's a nasty combination of keywords for that to get. I don't think we can win this game from this position. We really needed to see like an Eldurathan's glory off the top. He's got another lethal lethal troop too, so that's really really bad. Uh, do I just swing in here? He trades with the Repla Popper, then he swings with one Repla Popper, probably. Yeah, I don't think I can let this Leprechaun Artist live much longer, because even if we hit an Eldurathan's Glory, it's going to take us some time to finish him off, and then our Leprechaun Artist might actually just kill us. But we almost certainly can't not hold up sunlit sentence at this point he's if he has a refuel in hand he's gonna bring back both of these repl poppers and kill us pretty much just hoping to see Eldurathan's glory off the top. We're gonna sunlit sentence whatever he swings with. Even then it might be too late, because he can go like shard double refuel and bring back a bunch of troops. Probably swing with the corruptor and one of the repla poppers, I imagine. Nope, just those two. That's strange. Why would he Give up the familiars. Hmm. Well, whatever. Maybe we get some nice verdicts. Maybe he makes us draw a bunch of cards and we can find our answer. So our, like that ZX judgment from before, our Sunlit Sentence verdicts twice. So he's, he's making choices now between bad options for him and good options for us. He gives us a Phantom, which is a 1-1 one, one flight, so just a little blocker, and another Phantom. Okay, well, I mean, that can buy us some time. Still probably losing this game, but... See, I mean, he saw... We played Eldurathan's Glory on him last game, didn't we? Like, I would think he would keep a speed troop in hand fearing that card, but... Opponents are just... Super ballsy going all out here. I think we go... Shamrock... So, playing out him for sure. Him as well. Yeah, 
And why not? We'll play out you too. He could have Night Bloom. I just I just realized that. Now, if he had Night Bloom, he would have. And if he had Night Bloom, he should be he shouldn't be playing out that Phoenix. He could wait till this turn, play Phoenix Night Bloom, clear my board, and then swing in for the win. Now I imagine we're going to see, like, a refuel or two. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just death. So block here, block here, that only absorbs two damage. absorbs four yeah I'm pretty sure we're just dead here like I said we really need to hit the uh... and you can see how crazy these repli poppers can get oh he only overkilled us by 3 HP no big deal we're, we're currently 1-1 one one on the day. We won our first match, lost our second, and we're going into game three in, in our third match. Yeah, I mean, ultimately I like the way we boarded. We just We just couldn't quite get there. Maybe I kept the bad hand at the start of that game. Maybe I was supposed to mulligan. If you play MTG, you'll um, you'll catch on really quickly. This I have to mulligan. We don't have our second threshold, so this is acceptable. So uh, a little unlike MTG, the way the lands work in this game, Joe, is that when you play them, they provide a, a, a threshold or a color permanently, and it's a little different because. So, for example, if I play this resource and generate a white with it, and then next turn I play this wild shard and generate a green with it, any cards that have one cost, one white threshold, I can play two of them. Right? It's not like... So, it, it, the MTG equivalent would be like... I had played a plains and a forest, but I, but I can still tap my forest and generate white mana for it, with it. Kind of. Because all that all this game cares about is the threshold. So even if all I play are green resources for the rest of this game, I can play out a bunch of these Winter's Grass, even though because it, it has one white or diamond threshold, which I've already met the requirements for. It requires two resources to play, but one diamond threshold. So that's how it's slightly different. It's a little cleaner because you don't have to worry about tapping lands. Okay, so I could grasp this, though Repli-Popper is a little scarier, so maybe I should save it for that. <laughs> well, they actually... There actually was a lawsuit between MTG and Hex a couple years ago. For a number of things. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to save this Winter's Grass. I play the Shamrock. He can't swing for a while. I, I, think, I think I can save it. 
fearing a uh, fearing a, a speedy replipopper on one of his so. later turns. I'll save it. stack a non-resource on top here and just get rid of this now. Something else that's uh, quite different from uh, this and MTG, uh, MTG Joe is that each player has a champion and a champion power associated with them and what might and basically uh, how you activate them is with charges so in addition to providing you with resources to spend and thresholds um, each resource provides you with a charge typically and so our champion power for five resources gives a troop momentum I'll explain that keyword a little in a second and it lets us play an additional resource on our turn. So it's like a ramp, ramping champion. Uh, let's see. So we could activate our Shamrock, the Goldfather's ability, discarding three coins to play the top card of our deck for free, but then we're not, necess we're not guaranteed to have a resource. So I'd rather just... Uh. Play this Exalted Pathfinder. Play this Remnant of Life to get our fifth charge. I really need to learn how to check chat, talk, and play at a faster rate. We're currently like five minutes behind our opponent on the clock. I'm normally, <laughs> normally always ahead on clock for my opponents. So we're just kind of at a stalemate right now with our opponent. Um, but the thing is, we have cards that let us, you know, that we're, we're drawing extra cards from our Exalted Pathfinder. Whenever we play a resource, we draw a card. He's generating resources um, by playing cards from our, our Shamrock. So eventually, we're going to find the answers we need to sweep his board and then start punching through. We're pretty much just looking for an Eldurithan's glory at this point. Um, so first I would like to play one of these. Man, oh man. All right. So... God damn it. Our Shamrock found a Shamrock, and because Shamrock's unique, you can't have more than one in play at a time. He could block with all three of these, and they can't kill this, so... Wouldn't be surprised to see a block with the Zomboys here. You might also just take it. Hmm. 
the fact that we're not finding any more of our we have like what five more removal spells in our deck that we would really like to see right now as well as three old earthen's glory even a sunlit sentence isn't bad I'm really confused as to why... The, Z the Zomboys would block it all. A trample in this game is called Crush. Currently none of my troops have Crush. Yeah, and he, he just, he blocked with the flare fiend and then sacrificed it with the with this guy's ability so that you know it was going to die anyway but uh this guy lets him sacrifice troops to give it rage one rage one is a mechanic that says whenever it attacks it gets plus one attack permanent or plus whatever this number is permanently he has crush that's what this little fist symbol is rage is this there's flight speed oh no flight speed he could an, an interesting tech is that he could sacrifice his Boltwing Phoenix, and his Boltwing Phoenix says that when it dies, he can either put it back into his hand and give it plus one, plus one permanently, and increase its cost by one. Or he can he can let it stay in his graveyard, and then it deals damage equal to its attack to, to all my troops. He might do that now, actually. We'll see. Okay, so Zomboy says it has a one-shot ability that it brings back a troop from uh, his graveyard into play. So, how do I want to block here? We have a follow-up Goldfather, so I don't mind. I don't mind if this one uh, gets sacrificed to take out one of his troops. I might do that to the Bloodsworn because I'd really rather he don't. He doesn't have an ability to. Um, keep sacrificing troops and making it big, bigger and bigger. This, although the Zomboys brought it back from the Crypt, it's going to die at the end of turn, so I don't really want to block that. I think I'll go here and here. Rhyme Claw has a one-shot. I can give it Invincible, which is indestructible. Yeah, reach in this game is called Skyguard. I don't have uh, I don't have Sky. None of my troops have Skyguard. Normally don't need it because I have a I have a flying troop that that's also removal in the main deck. But I took it out for this matchup because um, because it's it's a seven it's a seven drop. So it's a little expensive for these aggressive decks. Although I really wish I had them now. Maybe it's maybe it's wrong to board them out completely. Maybe I should always keep one or two in, because these decks, you know, tends to be a little slower. <sighs> All right, so we're dead in five to this flyer, but what are the chances he has refuel? Probably like guaranteed. If he does have refuel, he's bringing this back. I can fully block the crush damage with this because it has invincible. So. I'm just gonna start playing everything. This could be a mistake. If he has like um, Night Bloom, he could clear our board and we're in a really, really bad spot. But I feel like at, at this stage, I just need to race him. There's the refuel we were expecting. Does he have a second one? No. 
Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Nah, it doesn't matter. If he has Night Bloom, we're dead anyway. Oh, do I not get a chance to respond to this? I guess not, because it's not a targeted ability. That kind of sucks for us, but... take two damage oh does the boltwing phoenix deal damage to me too no hmm well i think he's just dead okay well we win. <laughs> Opponent couldn't quite get there. He ran it. He ran out of gas. So we've confirmed that our mid-range deck is really good against aggro decks and bad against control decks. Surprise, surprise. I don't know if you guys want to see a different deck, or maybe I do a different mode. I don't really have many decks for standard built right now, but I mean, we, we could try the control deck that I have built. That was, um, I mean, it's probably, no, this game is all digital. 100% digital, so it allows them to do a lot of neat things that you could only do in the digital space when it comes to card games. Like the gems I was uh, explaining before, and there's all kinds of neat things you can do. This game has cards that you can put into the opponent's deck as like traps that when they draw it, it blows up. Microtransactions. It's, I mean, just like my, uh, just like Magic the Gathering, it's pretty much just uh, buying uh, packs. You can, so I'll explain a little bit about the game's economy right now. You, so it's free to play. You can, when you jump in, I believe it's been, it's been a few years and I've been playing for so long. They've probably changed a bunch of things now, but from what I understand, when you sign up, you get your choice of one or several starter, you get a choice of one of several starter decks, or you might just get a whole bunch of them now. And you can play uh, with that on the free to play uh, standard ladder, or you can even take it in the PVE portion of the game, which is a, uh, uh, it's like a campaign mode, like an RPG. You have a champion that you level up as you complete quests, and as you level up, you get more powerful passives and more powerful cards that you can put in your deck, yada, yada, yada. Um, anyway, gr uh, climbing the, lad the hex ladder and playing uh, in the PV campaign can earn you gold. Uh, playing on the ladder can earn you gold and packs which you can either crack open to get cards or you can sell them on the auction house for platinum, which is the kind of the, the direct in-game cur currency. Every platinum equals like one uh, US cent. And yeah, there's right now the game has some really good sort of competitive starter decks that you can buy for 25 bucks. They're like, they're, they're, they're good enough that you'll probably be able to grind from bronze, which is the lowest league, lowest rank on the ladder, up to cosmic, the highest. 
with 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 a fair bit of ease and they and they all have clear and easy you know there's a lot of ways you can upgrade them to make them more consistent or more powerful so 25 bucks to get like a decent they're kind of like i guess from mtg they're kind of like um Uh, what is that? What is that new product line that they just introduced? Uh, challenger decks. I think they're called challenger decks. So they're basically like MTG challenger decks. Twenty-five bucks to get uh, to get uh, decent competitive decks and uh, start grinding the ladder. And then once you get to cosmic. They just introduced this new in-game currency called Cosmic Coins. So the more you win while you're in Cosmic, the more coins you earn. If you go on a winning streak, you, you earn them even faster. And those can be exchanged for special packs. And in, within those packs are alternate art cards, even, a, even actual booster packs. Or you can build up a ton of them to buy uh, cosmetic upgrades like uh, battle boards. Matter of fact, I, I have a bunch of battle boards that we I can show off um, if you remind me. No, no, I don't want to concede. Just remind me and I can uh, I can show off some battle boards after. I'm just gonna play this out. I I don't know. He maybe he has a sweeper at some point. Maybe not. But this is this is just gonna put. So much pressure on him. We might even be able to close the game. We can get under whatever he's doing. Opponent's champion for four charges, Fate Weaves. So, and his troop, Fate Weaves whenever he gains health. So clearly he's some sort of Fate Weave, uh, Fate Weave themed decks. Fate Weave themed deck. He might swing here. If he does, I'm not going to block. It's not worth it. Okay, Fate Weave. It's kind of like Scry from MTG. So whenever, you, whenever a card Fate Weaves, you get a choice. You can either choose to stack a non-resource on top of your deck... Or, or a resource on top of your deck. It'll pick a ran it'll pick a random resource or non resource from your deck and put it on top. There are mill decks. There are mill decks. Yeah, the way the best way I've heard it describe describe is is like a super scry from other MTG streamers who also play this game. And I know enough about magic to know what scry does. Like I know what scrying does, but. Tutoring, I thought tutoring was like you would search. I thought tutoring refers to searching your deck for specific cards. Maybe I'm wrong. This one you can't search your deck. Fateweave doesn't let you stack the top of your deck exactly what, with what you want, but it can it can let you mitigate your draws a little bit more. So the nice thing about these right, I don't, I didn't explain the momentum mechanic uh, to any new viewers, so I'll explain it now. So momentum says whenever you play a resource, your troop gets plus attack and defense equal to this number until the start of your next turn, and then this number increases by one. So next turn, because she has momentum four, she's going to get plus four plus four until the start of my next turn. And if I can do things like play ramp spells or use my champion power that lets me play multiple resources on my turn it's going to trigger momentum multiple times and create really really big troops really really fast now the other thing is this righteous whack shot says whenever it deals combat damage to an opposing champion a random troop i control gets momentum one so because he let both of those in before now the next resource i play is just going to make these guys huge problem is i don't have another resource right now so you don't lose moment. You don't lose. Uh, if you don't stop attacking, you don't lose momentum. If you stop drawing resources, you you lose momentum. 
And we're probably about to see that right now. Okay, well, we got lucky. So we drew... So see, now our, our, our whack shots are ba back to their base state, zero ones. But as soon as I play this resource, they'll get buffed. Our Exalted Pathfinder, not only is he a momentum troop, but he draws us a card whenever we play a resource. So he's just generating a ton of value for every resource we play. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just swing with this. Yeah, the, the Exalted Pathfinder is really good. It's, it's pretty much the backbone of the momentum decks it allows us to keep our hand full so we can keep playing playing resources because and c constantly triggering our momentum so we don't lose it because we're kind of getting into the situation now it's where yeah our board is really scary but if i don't hit a resource off the top of my deck i can't do anything next turn oh i can't do much next turn Really hoping to see either a resource off the top next turn or a, a, a Palm of Granite. Palm of Granite is a ramp spell that plays a random wild shard from our deck and gives us a random wild shard from our deck. He keeps on killing our, our guys though. Do we see a resource? We do. We're one resource away from playing this Eternal Seeker. Eternal Seeker is a really, really powerful card. Let's see if we get there. Now he has to block, or he's dead. Unfortunately, this momentum didn't land on our Brilliant and Nihilix, which is what I was really hoping for, but whatever. Now, knowing my luck, he'll have something like Annihilate in his deck and we'll lose our whole board. That's pretty good for him. So Brilliant and Nihilix can't be blocked or targeted by non-prismatic cards. However, this is prismatic. A prismatic card is any card that has more than one threshold. Two, let's, let's say it's any card that has two or more thresholds. There's our pomegranate that we were talking about before. So this is essentially two resources for me right now. Which means he's, he's going to be forced to block again, although he might be dead anyway. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's dead. So I use my charge power, give my Brilliant and Nihilix momentum one permanently. So now, that combined with his, his uh, gem ability, when you play a resource, this gets plus one plus one, means this thing's gonna get really, really big. Just enough. Yep, opponent packs it in. Okay, so he's playing Fate Weave Midrange Mush. So, honestly, I think our primary game plan is fine. We probably don't need to board in anything here. I mean, the Arcing Lights could be okay if he gets that one Fate Weave troop that keeps buffing his troops. So I can revert them. Arcing Light says revert up to three target cards. Um... But, I mean, I can just, chances are I can just kill them with Eternal Seekers or Decree of Banishing. I don't know, we're, we're up a game, we'll see what he does. If we, if we go to game three, I'll think about boarding more. Yeah, Hex is full of um, play on words and puns like that. Either in the actual card names or in the flavor text. 
So palm of, palm of granite is a, is the picture is a pomegranate with palms turning into granite and he's like some sort of martial artist. I'll, I'll pull up the, the artwork again if we, uh, if, if we see it. And I hope we do because it's one of our best cards. Wow. It just, it really kicks our deck into overdrive. That's a strong hand, but we we do need resources. Luckily, our Diamond Ice is a Fate Weave shard, so we can guarantee our third resource drop. And then our Shamrock the Gold Father is probably going to generate at least one resource. Looks like he's got a little bit of a momentum uh, secondary theme to his deck here. Yeah, I'll go ahead and, and hit this. I don't want him generating lucky coins from the triggers of the uh, of the Leprechaun Artist. All right, or he'll just play a second one, sure. That's fine though, it delays his uh, attacks for one turn. Leprechaun Artist is a momentum troop with Steadfast, which is like Vigilance in MTG. And it says whenever he attacks, he creates a lucky coin. So another way to keep the momentum decks fueled up. I am going to, because we have a double diamond troop in our hand, we'll go ahead and play this for our second diamond threshold. Play out the Gold Father. He likely doesn't have any pomegranates of his own, so this Leprechaun Artist shouldn't be able to attack into our Shamrock freely. But, could be wrong. We will see. There's the troop I was mentioning before. Whenever he, whenever you Fate Weave, this troop gives a target troop you control plus two plus two permanently. Now, he's missing his second Diamond Threshold that is a requirement for his charge power, so he couldn't activate his fate weave this turn. Otherwise, he could have made his Leprechaun Artist a 5-5 to attack into the Shamrock. Okay, so we have... We have Eldurathan's Glory next turn. So if we can somehow avoid him buffing his troops, we can take, we can take him away from him, but that's unlikely. Yeah, he's just swinging here to to because he's missing his resource drop. So I'm I'm definitely gonna block that because I don't want him to play the resource and get this out of range of our Eldurth and glory. And now we're pretty much gonna clean clean up his board and be in a really really good spot. We're gonna have oh right the coins fate weave. Never mind. Derp. Well then. I guess we're just going to keep stacking resources off the top of our deck. Would really like to find... Copy. Those are both four cost troops, yeah. We have a... I'm just going to play this out to use my resources this turn. And if he doesn't... If he can't Fate Weave again, it's a good blocker to what he's got going on. This isn't, and I'd rather leave, keep it. Oh, but you know what? It's no, nah, never mind. Yeah, I'd rather keep this. Hoping we see a non-slow shard off the top of our deck, so that I can go shard, charge, power, second resource, play Eternal Seeker, clean his board up. Oh, 
I'll block one of them. I don't think I... How big are you getting your 4-4? Four, four? I don't need to block two. Take six. Go down to 16. Great. We hit a non-slow shard. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna actually play... Put the momentum on the Shamrock so he can block a little bit better. We've hit seven resources, so we don't really need... Now, when Eternal Seeker comes into play, this is this is kind of what's nice about this second gem. Rowdy is going to trigger, putting my Brilliant Nihilix to cost five. So it doesn't die to this Eternal Seeker. Eternal Seeker says when it comes into play, choose a number. Void all other cards of the chosen number. So I'm going to pick four. Get rid of those two. And that's the game. We'll play one more on the on the ladder and then, I don't know, see if people want to do something else. And we get into a match right away, so that's nice. Yeah, Eternal Seeker is a really, really powerful card. If we can manage to win this, I think we have enough Cosmic Crowns to buy, or Cosmic Coins, whatever the hell they're called, to, to buy a couple packs and we can open those on stream. Haraza the Incinerator. Haven't seen you in a while. Let's see what he's got going on. So Haraza says her charge power is for seven charges, she puts a burning banner into play. And a burning banner is a constant or an enchantment that says troops you control have plus one in speed or haste. So usually they'll have cards in their deck that generate extra charges for them beyond just the resources they play to get to this this uh, banner very quickly. There's currently... Oh wait, no, did it rotate out? Eh, ignore me, anyway. We'll see what they, ha we'll see what they do to, to get to this charge power ahead of curve. I'm assuming they have something. But he's missing uh, his third shard drop, so... I mean, that's obviously great for us. Alright, so now I'm gonna play a Shamrock out, so. swing with the Righteous Whack shot. If it connects, our Shamrock is gonna get Momentum 1. And just, we already have a really, really scary board. Alright, he hit it, he hit his third shard. What's his play? Wouldn't be surprised to see, like, a Primordial Sabretooth hit our shamrock. If it does, I'm gonna... Okay, Jouncing Carnage. Destroy target artifact or troop. So there goes our shamrock. We have a backup though. And uh, that shamrock generated a lucky coin for us on his way out, so. We are in a fine position. Hmm. If he has, yeah, no, I'll just play that. So I'll just do it again. I'm gonna stack a resource on top of the deck so I can ensure that I hit my charge power on time. Alright, Scars of War. This deals two damage to all troops and adds the line of text, this is not healed at the end of each turn. So it's gonna kill our Righteous Whack Shot. Our Shamrock will live, but he'll be permanently have two damage on him at all times. Which makes me a little hesitant to do what I'm about to do, but we're gonna draw a bunch of cards, so it's probably fine. What's what's OP? The Scars of War. Capiche. 
It's really not that bad. It's 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 uh, symmetrical, so it does it to your troops too. It's a weird thing to see in a deck that I assume is a troop-based deck that's trying to go wide on me. It seems like it's detrimental to his primary game plan, but whatever, hex ladder. Just just hex ladder things. Uh okay. Uh we didn't really get to see much out of his deck, so I don't know how to board here. But honestly, our primary game plan is probably fine. Maybe three Eternal Seekers are a little much. Uh, maybe I want the Rhyme Claws to stop any like early pressure that he might be putting on. Yeah, let's let's go let's go with that. Let's do this, especially because we're on the draw now. So, I mean, yeah, hex hex doesn't have too many sweepers, and once you once you learn to play around all of them, it, it doesn't feel so bad. Scars of War is one of them, one of the uh, one of the premier ones right now. It's about to rotate out. No, I, I don't buy booster packs. I sell them. <laughs> I'll open up some free booster packs, though, if you guys want. Or if you want. I, I'm saying guys like I have a ton of viewers right now. I think you're the only one. Yep, that's a good hand. Wax Sacrament on one. Generate a 1-1 one, one blocker. Leprechaun Artist on two. Shamrock on three. Have some removal. All right, our opponent is off to a slow start here. You know what he might be? I just realized this. Maybe the reason we didn't see any early pressure out of him last game is because he's not actually really an aggro deck. He might just be Blood Ruby Control. And he's playing um, Engorged Gobbler at the top end. So Engorged Gobbler is a card that costs 10. It's a 10-10 trample for 10. But it says for every action you play, it gets cost minus one permanently. No matter where it is. Even if it's, if it's in your hand or if it's in your deck. So he might just be delaying the game to get to that point and then then he'll be able to put down a burning banner then he'll have a speedy 1110 with crush i see you opponent i see what you're doing so we could palm of granite here but we have no troops to really take advantage of that so i eh, could scars of war yeah i'll just take the two damage from this and Oh. Yeah, and if he draws multiple of them, he, he could end up playing two. He could have like 20 power on the table. Oh shoot, I meant to show what that card does. And yeah, next time. Point is, he played a card that kills my Shamrock and doesn't generate a coin for me. Now we'll play into a Scars of War. Yep, he's like a super removal heavy deck, so I'm I'm assuming there's an engorged gobbler in our future, potentially. Um Gonna be important for me to note 
how much action he has played this game. Just these three. Right? Yeah. So his go if he does have gobblers, they still cost seven currently. This might seem weird, but I'm just going to momentum up this candle because I I'd rather just create another threat that he has to waste removal on, and then I have these big boys as follow-ups. That said, I might save this shard, because if we draw an, an exalted Pathfinder, I want to draw a card from it, plus I'd like to continue triggering momentum. So even though I could play that this turn, I'm going to save it. So, Joe, am I talking enough or talking too much? Because I feel like I'm talking too much. Especially at the beginning of the stream. Well, that's really bad. So we played a Vampire Queen. Vampire Queen creates two Vampire Children. And when they're ready, they can either turn into a Vampire Prince or a Vampire Princess. And they all have a whole bunch of their uh, keywords and abilities. But they also have Flight and Life Drain, and he just gave them plus one in speed because of that Burning Batter. I mean, fortunately, we have a good follow-up. And that's this Eldurathan's Glory. Does mean we're going to lose our Candle. I should have played out the, the Righteous Whack Shot. Is this a Gobbler? No. That is a great draw. Because this Invincible can absorb all the damage. From an Engorged Gobbler. Fine. Well, we lost our Eternal Seeker. He gets to look at our hand and uh, take away a card. So... Oh yeah, I guess I didn't show what this does before. Eldurathan's Glory says void each troop with defense three or less, which applied to all of the troops he had. That's why we lost our candle, too. It wasn't quite big enough. Okay, I'm going to save this for when we draw a shard, because I don't want him hitting it with removal. All right, we, we lose our Withering Gaze, but... It, it, I don't think it has text in this matchup. He knows we have Exalted Pathfinder, so he's going to be incentivized to kill this so we don't generate coins every turn to fuel it. We really, really don't want to see a Scars of War from him off the top. He's holding two cards, though. I, I don't know what those could be. What could he have? I'm gonna stack a resource on top just in case. Well, I also want to trigger momentum before combat next turn. If he Scars of Wars us here, it's, it's not the worst. Yeah, we're down a lot of HP, but... 
I think we're stabilizing now. Oh, here comes the Scars of War. <laughs> or that, sure. That's a lot less worse. Okay, great. Double Pathfinder means we draw two cards with every resource we play. Oh, what could he have? I mean... Should have probably just played out this Shamrock. Have a drop of wax. Okay, well, I don't know what he has in hand, but he's dead on board. He drew the Scars of War. Cool. It's not enough, though, so I'm not sure why... We haven't just moved on with our lives, but... And that's how fast momentum can turn the corner. Shall we open some packs? <laughs> we started today at, I think, at rank 300. We're now in the top 200. So, whenever you win games uh, while you're in Cosmic on the Hex Ladder, you earn something called Cosmic Coins. I have 210 currently, which is... Enough to buy two Cosmic Coin packs, so let's do that. One, two... Did I buy them or what? Oh, that's okay. What? Wow. Why does it take me three clicks to buy things? Anyway. Let's open them up. And then we can switch formats. We could play some of the PvE content. Or we could switch decks. We can try another deck, perhaps. Alright, let's see what we get. Mm, where are they? Here they are. Pack number one. We got a Soaring Cataclyst alternate art. That looks freaking cool. Yeah, these aren't normal booster packs, though. Normal booster packs have multiple cards in them. These are special booster packs that give you all kinds of neat stuff. And we got a refuel alternate art. Art on this is pretty great. You know what? Why don't we go back on the ladder for like a couple games and lose with a deck? that I can put one of those cards that we just earned into. We'll play a different deck. So I'm gonna stop recording now.